Hey, Amy on Fire here. In this video today, I'm going to show you how to fix a leaking radiator hose. Um, I think it's also called the heater hose in a Chrysler Town & Country minivan. Mine's a 2010, and um, from what I understand, it's pretty much the same part for a big range of years. I got mine on eBay. I will give you the link for that because it was a great kit because it came with everything that I needed. It came with the uh, piece, the little like V tubing that I needed and the regular tube and all the clamps. Really simple and easy. It's $30, um, including shipping. Came right to my door. I didn't have to think about it. And then all I needed, um, all you need after that is a pair of scissors or pruning shears, the handheld kind, something that will cut the tubing pretty easily. A couple screwdrivers, you need a small one and a larger one. Some locking pliers, usually they don't have this rubber on them. You know what they look like, they just clamp on. And I used a box cutter slash utility knife. Um, so let me show you how it's done. And um, hopefully this helps you out because it was going to cost a lot of money to get this done at a shop. These are all the tools I used, nothing crazy. The only thing I had to get was that locking wrench because I did not have one. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is see this is the piece right here that's leaking. So what we're going to do is cut it up here and right here and then remove the clamp down here so that we can take this whole piece off because that's what we're going to be replacing. The scissors are working, but it's kind of a two-handed job. Let me see. Oh, oh, there we go. These are just some decent xylus scissors. They're nothing super special, but they cut right through that rubber tubing super easily. All right, I'm gonna put this down while I do the other one because I can't reach it without a, well, you won't be able to see it. Okay, so the part that I see missing in the other videos is how to get that last bottom part of the hose off because it has a clamp. So what you need is a locking wrench like this, but when you squeeze it, it locks into place. These adjust by twisting this down here, bigger and smaller. So do that until you feel like it clips and locks with enough space to hold the clamp. And then what I'm gonna do is put it on the clamp to hold it open for me so that I can pry the hose off. Let me show you. It's a little tricky getting things down here. But, there you go. So you see the clamp, two pieces of it. Let me see, there you go. See that clamp down there? Right there. Okay, I'm going to take this on the two parts of it and hold it open tight. See that now? Maybe. And I'm going to the wrench shut on it so that it holds it open. There we go. Now see how that's holding the two strips there? And now it's looser so I can fit a screwdriver under there and kind of pry it off. I just have to be careful about it. So I'm going to use my screwdriver right here and pry this off now that the clamp is loosened enough for me to do so. So what I did here so far was actually hold the pliers and slide this piece down off of the actual pipe to get it to the softer part of the hose to make this hose easier to pry off. Because it's pretty tight, it's kind of hard to get off there, so it takes a little bit of elbow grease. I did it! I found a much easier way than what I was trying to do with prying the screwdriver under and what I'd seen other people do. What I did was I pried this little screwdriver, much smaller one, under the edge here just enough so that it was lifted a little bit and then I took my box cutter, my utility knife here, and just sliced that at a little bit and then the whole thing just popped right off. It was so much easier than what I was trying before and what I've seen other people do. So now this piece is off. You can see I've cut the hoses there and there's the pipe it was attached to, a little bit of trans, uh, coolant comes out, but um, that's not a problem. I put cardboard underneath the car because it was leaking already. Now I'm going to go get the part. Boom, there you go. Look at that. I had to push things out of the way and stretch this out a little bit, and I made sure I put this in far enough so that that little lip would be way in and the clamp would be on the other side of it. 
So it's a little tricky and definitely takes a little bit of power, but you can do it. Now something to think about when you do this is to make sure you put that clamp on before you stick it in here because you can't, you know, it's a ring. It seems kind of common sensey, but just in case you're not thinking about it and thinking ahead, slip that clamp on the Y before you insert it into the tube. Okay, I'm almost done. I just put the hose piece on here with the clamp and now I'm just gonna screw that tight on here and I should be in business and good to go. Look how pretty that is, I did it. I'm really excited. This was gonna cost me like $300 at the dealership or $100 just for this huge piece that they wanted to replace this whole giant thing and all it took was 30 bucks and about half an hour of my time. So I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited because I just fixed my car all by myself. To me, this is just like a really huge accomplishment. And I did not have the money to spend $300 for a dealership or auto shop to take care of it. They wanted me to replace this big, huge piece, the whole entire radiator pipe thing. It was $100 and there was one slightly smaller piece that was about $60. And then I would have to have somebody else do it because I could not even physically reach where those things had to go. It was gonna make me pay a professional. So this little fix where we instead cut off this one little piece was just phenomenal. Um, and let me just show you this one thing quick in case you couldn't tell in the video before. The part that I clamped down, this here is the clamp um, that the dealers put in and how you have to release it is by pinching it, which you cannot do with your hands. So I took these lock, locking, I don't know, wrench, I don't even know what you call it, locking, they're called locking pliers according to the package. So see, you don't have to know what they're called to know how to use them. Anyway, I made it the right size, I clamped it right on either side of these two little hooks, and by doing so, well, you gotta get it in the right spot to make it work, so hold on a second. When you clamp that down, this loosens up and it moves along. So what I did was I slid this down so it wasn't on the pipe anymore to make the space and that's when I cut it open. I got the screwdriver under and cut it with the box cutter so that I could get it off really easily. Now, my thoughts on the project, it was definitely a little bit harder than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was gonna be like a 10 minute fix because it looks like it's really fast. Um, what I found in some of the other videos online was that they were not quite explicit enough for me to just sit down, or not sit down, you can't sit down, but to just get under the hood and actually do it because I wasn't 100% sure how to get that clamp off and to get the tubing off. Um, so that took me a few minutes. What, um, what worked out great for me was using these scissors to cut off the tubing. I think if you had um, like a pruning shear, they're a little bit sharper and harder. It might have made that part a little bit simpler. But um, it just took a minute and some elbow grease, you know. I cut the tubing off. And then the only other harder part was, you know, getting the tube off that pipe, which like I said, I found the faster way. Definitely clamp that, um, that bracket, slide it off, pry your little tiny screwdriver under there, use the box cutter to make a slit and the thing pops right off. After that, it was pretty easy. So, so basically, aside from learning how to get all the pieces off, putting it together was really simple. Um, at least figuring out how to put it together. It took a little bit of strength and contorting myself. I think I scratched up my knuckles a little bit, getting in there with the screwdriver to tighten the clamps. But, um, and I would recommend, I used this little screwdriver um, with a slippery plastic handle. By the time my hands were covered with coolant and stuff, this screwdriver sucked. I would definitely try to get one with a better handle before doing this project, um, or at least one like this. This one's a little um, more textured, so it would have been easier as I got slippery to do it. But that's it. The only other thing that, um, that I need to do now is get a little bit more coolant to fill up the um, container for that, and, and then it's a go. My car is good. I started it up afterward. It's running, there's nothing leaking, and I did it. I fixed my own car, and you can too.